Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome to this episode of Jim and Java. We're excited to have you back again today for another episode of Jim and Java. Jim and Java is a part of the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel, and we're excited to have you. We would love for you to join us as part of this growing community of nonprofit leaders who are trying to increase their income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. And we'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you enjoy this video, please click on the link below and make sure that you also hit the subscribe button and to get notifications of future videos, be sure to click on the bell to do so. If you need to reach us, you can reach me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com and you can also reach out with questions at uh, at devfstrats and the hashtag Jim and Java on Twitter, or also send me messages on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. And let's jump right into our first set of questions. Our first question is from Dawn in Dallas, Texas. And Dawn asks, with the resurgence of COVID and the Delta variant, what are your recommendations for a fall event and possibly a spring event? Well, this has been uh, a, a quite a wild ride for the last 18 months or more. And uh, just as we were just hoping uh, and, and seeming that this would we were going to be over with, it just seems like um, things are just going to continue on a little bit longer, which makes our role of event planning a little bit more difficult. And it just means that we're going to have to uh, be ready uh, to change flex at a moment's notice. In fact, the term that we used a lot last year was pivot. And I would say that uh, that term, at least for a little while, isn't going to go away. And so uh, as much as uh, I was ready to uh, get back to normal, it doesn't look like it's going to happen that way. And from the standpoint of, uh, there's probably just a couple things that uh, most of, of you are probably thinking about, and that really would have to deal with, do we do a live or do we do a virtual event? And I really have to keep going back to my, my strong beliefs, my feelings, uh, the things that I have strongly believed for, especially the last six months, was that our our audience, those individuals who are either current donors or potential donors, um, what those individuals a year ago in March and April and May, those individuals who were locked down were excited to watch virtual events and they didn't have a lot to do and were excited to even have an opportunity to see what's going on with an organization virtually. But as we saw happen moving into the fall of 2020 and the spring of 2021, we started to see what I refer to as YouTube and Zoom fatigue. And, and I would have to say that most of the individuals, in fact, almost 100% of the partners, the donors that I have talked with, would all say that they're still in the same position, that they are YouTubed and Zoomed out. And that doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't do a virtual event. Um, I would have to say that a virtual event may be at this point in time better than not doing anything at all. Uh, what I would have to say is, and that's changed a little bit, because there is still a lot of work involved with a virtual event. And the amount, uh, the well, the number of views, viewers uh, on a live broadcast, and the number of views has decreased significantly, and the amount of money that's given on these virtual events has decreased. And there's a point where you really need to weigh the cost-benefit analysis. You need to see with all the work involved in doing a virtual event, is it really worthwhile to do something virtually uh, to get very little return? In fact, it may actually be more discouraging than encouraging. And so I think you really need to weigh that. My recommendation is still 
press on to do something smaller. What we found in the spring was that a, a smaller gatherings actually did significantly better because what happened was the most committed, the best partners or donors to your organization were the ones who actually made it out and they came to that event. And if you uh, are one of those organizations that utilize the model that I recommend, which is not to charge for your event, that meant less cost for meals and that meant that you had more money for your net income. So what we found in the spring of 2021 was that we actually netted more money because we may have had fewer people, but those individuals gave significantly, they were ready, they were prepared to give, and your expenses were less because you had to pay for less meals and there were less costs. Yes, there are fixed costs that are gonna be there no matter what. In most cases, probably audiovisual is one of those fixed costs, costs that are out there, but in most cases, your costs are probably gonna be down. So my recommendation still is, is to press forward, but consider a smaller version of that. Now, people ask me, well, what about all the restrictions? Well, yes, there's gonna be restrictions out there. In fact, we're starting to see more mask mandates. We're starting to see more, um, and we're starting to even see some limited um, uh, attendance in, in some locations. And some of the mandates in certain cities are even now mandating that individuals show their vaccine cards. And those restrictions are going to be there. They were there in events that I did in the fall of 2020. They were there in the events that I did in the spring of 2021. And it looks like, as much as I hope they weren't going to be, they're going to be there again in fall of 2021. So if it means that you have people wear masks uh, from their car or wherever uh, to registration during a reception, if there is a reception, they wear their masks to their table. In most cases, most venues, even the government health regulations, are allowing individuals to take their masks off to eat. Now, what is still undetermined and really goes by on a case-by-case -case basis based on the government is will they be required to continue to wear their mask after they're done eating for the rest of the program. It would be nice if they didn't have to wear their mask, but if it means the difference between doing an event or not doing an event, I think having your event where people are watching masks are not that bad. I did an event in Kansas City in the spring of 2021 where everyone in the entire room wore a mask for the entire program except for when an individual, either MC or the program participant, was going to speak up front. And that allowed them to, uh, they allowed them to take their mask off for that so that we could hear the presentation. So those restrictions, as difficult as they were in 2020, have seemed to be, we've gotten used to them, let's put it that way. It would not be, of course, our preference to have to wear masks all the way through, but to at least have a gathering where people are together, they can have conversations around tables, and they can hear the presentation and have an opportunity to give. I'll take that over not having an event at all. So my recommendation to you would be to leave it to your audience. I would press forward, still continuing to have an event, uh, thinking smaller scale, and, uh, and let the audience really determine whether they are willing, if they've been vaccinated, if they feel comfortable coming out, knowing that the variant's out there. Uh, you're always gonna have people that are gonna be 100% opposed to having an event or going to an event, but you will have a good number of people that will wanna be part of that. I hope that helps, um, and um, that ends this broadcast of Jim and Java. Once again, we would love to have you as a subscriber and make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future broadcasts. And we would love to hear from you. If you've got questions, go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you prefer something like Instagram to reach out to me, I'm out at Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, and I would love to hear from you. As always, uh, we are here for the goal to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.